Ungaku Concept. Hey everybody, welcome to Ungaku Concept. Uh, welcome to another composing episode. Uh, this week I thought it would be fun to try writing uh, a four, maybe an eight bar melody and uh, just demonstrating um, use of music theory to just help write a melody. Um, so the first thing I'm going to say is that I don't want you to go into this uh, th expecting to learn how to write a melody by the end of this video, because writing music is such a uh, is such an experience taught thing. Um, no matter how much knowledge you know, no matter how much knowledge you know, no matter no matter how much you know, uh, you can never get experience from a book or from a YouTube video or anything like that. You just have to get out there and do it. And f at first, it's not going to sound very good, but you're going to get better and better as you. Uh, continue, but I do want to demonstrate just kind of what it's like um, to write a melody if you have never really done that before, if you're looking to get started. So let's 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 try some stuff here. I have Muse score open here with just a blank um, eight bars, and I'm in the key of D flat because I like D flat. In common time, and uh, let's get started. So I was kind of thinking uh, of maybe doing something medieval. I've been playing Zelda a lot. <laughs> I've been playing Majora's Mask a lot lately. And uh, I was kind of thinking of doing some kind of uh, medieval sounding uh, song. So I thought, let's try out the, um, the Mixolydian mode, because the Mixolydian mode sounds very medieval. That's the uh, D flat mixolydian mode. It just has a flattened seventh. It's the same thing as the regular major scale. But we take that seventh note and flatten it. Sounds really cool. So uh, let's try that. Let's just try writing something kind of like that. I'm thinking of something maybe kind of kind of perky and bright. Maybe like a. Uh, Something kind of like that. Maybe that's how an accompaniment might go. But let's try writing a melody. So, um, sure, let's say if that were to, to be going on in the background, like as a song started. And then I'm thinking like maybe on a woodwind or something. Uh, Something like that. Sure, let's go ahead and write that down. Um, so we're starting on that C flat there. And then we have, oopsie, suddenly forgot how to write triplets in Muse score. I could just play this in on the keyboard, but, um, I am not much of a keyboardist, so it's easier for me to just do this. Alright, so something like this. Yeah. I think that sounds really nice. It sounds kind of bright and perky with, like, the triplets there. Um... And like the staccato, staccato rhythms like this. This this little this little dot here is a staccato marking. Um, it just means to play a very short note, like a like that. And it's nice for for really perky rhythms. Um, I like that. So let's see. Do 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 do. What if, what if maybe something else like followed that? Maybe an, another woodwind to follow that an octave higher. Sorry, my uh, A flat key is a little bit stuck up there. I'll copy this part to the flute and then get rid of the piano because I don't want it right now. A 
I suppose I should flip these around. It's better. I'm going to let this note extend through here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Alright, I'll put a little rest here, and then maybe, uh... Maybe put these few notes here just to kind of bring it back in. So it's not as awkward of, like... Because, you know, this note ends here, and then the flute picks back up. I think having something here to kind of bring it back in would be nice as a transition. So maybe something... Where's my chords? It's a D flat. Okay. Do, 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 do. So let's maybe go down like a triad there. Do, do, do. I actually want to bring this up an octave if it's possible. Oh, you know what I want to do? My ear says go up a half step from there, so I'm going to do it. And then go down in a, a triad. I cannot hum. Uh. What am I playing? So this right here. Wait, yes, this is D flat, but I want to call it. It's a C. It's a. But I kind of broke my my pacing, and now I'm not quite sure where I was going with that. So maybe take my mistake as a lesson. If you uh, don't let yourself get hung up on writing things down when you're uh, when you're composing, like don't get yourself hung up on the correct way to write something down. Just get your ideas out. Um, and worry about formatting it for readability later. Because um, what's most important, and that's part of why, instead of continuing on after I got through this, uh, these first few notes here, instead of continuing on with it, I, I stopped and I wrote it down. Because if you continue on with an idea and try and develop it further and further in your head, uh, then when you go back to the start and... It, it, you may not remember what you had in the first place. So it's best to just come up with small segments and uh, and write them down as you go, in my experience. Um, so just take my, my mistake as, a, as an example. So, right, we were going down like an A triad or something. All right, so maybe like a... Okay, so my brain says I have two options here. I would, I could go go down following the same pattern, or I could stop here and let the piccolo take over again. But I think I'm gonna keep going down the same pattern. I may bring the piccolo in anyway. This is turning out to be kind of two melodies together, um, but I, I really like it so far. But I'm going to try to keep going with this pattern. Um, just to get our bearings, by the way. Again, we're in the key of D-flat. This whole thing is kind of based on the D-flat Mixolydian scale. Here I had a uh, descending C-flat chord. That's the flat 7. Here, I'm calling it A just because I don't want to write out... I don't. I can't remember what the notes are in B double flat. I can't be bothered to write that down. I'm just going to put A um, <laughs> for right now. So it's like a flat... Uh, flat 7, flat 6, borrowed from the parallel minor. Um, if you don't understand that, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try going down another, um, following this pattern, going down yet another whole tone. Um, just 
Dang it, it's doing that again. I need to make that sharp. So we're just going to get like a, a G chord here. See. Let me return to the piano. I was having good, uh, good results when I was playing it on a piano, and I've kind of been working specific uh, entirely on the computer so far. So let me let me go back to that. Um, try that. Make these a bit longer. All right. Still sounding quite like I imagined it in my head. My brain's hearing something, but it's such a big jump that it's hard for me to identify the interval. Maybe I'll just change keys to G. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Now we got something that works. I think I, uh, I think music theory could have, uh, if I was paying attention, could have, uh, helped me, helped me make some more sense of this. Because I was going down this um, this pattern where I would go down, because here we were playing over a D flat chord, then we moved down a, a whole tone to C flat, then to a B double flat, and now to A double flat or G, um, and I think from here, just coming coming up this scale, we can kind of cement this in the key of G. Maybe maybe we'll change key. Let's see what we can do with the with the piccolo now. I think I'm gonna let this continue on just like the uh, other one did. So this is a uh, um, an A flat. Fits perfectly fine over this. But I'm gonna move it down as the chords change. Um, I like that. I really like that resolution. I don't know why. It, it, it started to sound a little iffy to me right over here, but then it ended on this, and I, I really like the sound of it. I think I'm going to harmonize the scale here. 
So I'm just going to paste this in um, and move it down. Actually, I'm transitioning to the C uh, to the G major scale here. We have I'm harmonizing a, a sixth higher. Um, so we have so we have C here. So I went up to A, G, B, uh, G. I'm sorry, uh, D, B, G. I'm gonna go to E. That's not right. Sorry. I'll do that instead. I like that sound a lot. I think here. Let's have them units in here. All right. That is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for key signatures. All right, so I'm going to change the key to G, which is a very strange key to change to from D flat. Uh, it's very strange, but um, I think so. I guess you could say, how did this modulation work? Well, because I started going in a pattern. I already established that I was working in D mixolydian, a D flat mixolydian, which it makes sense to use the the flat seven chord. Uh, it even makes sense to use the flat six chord. That's pretty normal enough. And then I go down even further to like flat five, and I, I'm following this whole tone pattern. And I just go up this scale, and uh, I use this leading tone, which is F sharp, to just you know change keys to G. And I'm thinking of a very bouncy melody, kind of to return to that um, feeling I had at the, at the start of it. So I'm thinking uh, maybe. Get a staccato thing here. Uh, no, I don't want a dotted note. Um. Let's try that. So here's what we have in, in total. Returning to this melody, uh, not melody, this uh, rhythm. It's a very similar rhythm to what we had in the intro. I swear I've heard this modulation before. I don't know in what, but. Make these all staccato as well. Sorry, you can't hear what's going on in my head. I should just be playing it out on the piano. Um. I want to add two more bars.
Or no, I only need one bar. Remove that one. All right, so here's what we got. So in this part here is uh, where the piccolo is going to kind of take a back seat and the flute's going to come in again. Um, over here, though, I'm going to have... Um, Try that. Get some more movement here to suggest that the flute's going to uh, start doing some more in these next three bars. Maybe do 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 or something. Maybe that's a little too many notes without a space, but... Make this a quarter note instead. That's interesting. I think I, uh... Shouldn't go quite that high. How about we do an F natural? To kind of reference that mixolydian mode back at the beginning. Uh, let's, let's go with a... I don't want that to ring out. I don't like the way it extends for that other bar. Let me go ahead and remove this bar. And from here, I think maybe it would extend. Yeah, let's do that. Whoops, I meant to be natural there. So from here, we'd have this, uh, these two notes here, uh, F sharp and uh, a, a B flat, A sharp, whatever. Um, the B flat going up to a B natural and the F sharp going up to, uh, to G. I, I've always liked throwing in the minor third just because I like how it sounds. Um, and that kind of resolves back on G. And it would continue on with some, some kind of pattern, but, uh, but yeah, here's what we have. I'll I'll delete these because I, I I don't intend on actually continuing it this way, but um, but yeah, I mean, so so this got a little confusing, 
and that was my fault. And you can see, well, here, let me show you. Let me show you the whole, the whole completed section we have here. Something like, kind of like that. And maybe this part could be revised a little bit as far as the harmony goes. Um, but I think, I think what we have here is a really good start. And I think it can make like a neat, maybe kind of like a, a market theme or something like in a medieval, like market or, or whatever, something like that. Um, I like the, uh, I like the energy that it has and all the chromatic notes. And, uh, um, so as far as like the techniques I used to write this, I mean, really, as far as like the actual notes themselves went, most of it was just, Hey, here's this thing in my head. Let me try and figure it out on the keyboard or whatever and, and, pu and put it down. And, um, and you can see that I, I really had trouble um, writing down certain things that were in my head that I, I didn't quite know the interval for, and I should have stuck to the piano. It would have made it a lot easier for me. Um, and I mean, everybody has their own ways of working, uh, but I think that's a reminder to learn your intervals uh, especially the wider ones, and, uh, and also writing with an instrument is really helpful, and you should do it. Um, so, as far as, like, techniques, so, again, this is a very medieval-inspired melody, so I got the mixolydian mode going on, um, and I'm using a lot of staccato and, uh, quick notes here for, um, for that kind of bouncy, vibrant sound. Um, and then changing the key to G, uh, I just started going to the flat seven chord and the flat six, flat five, and I just ended up going up this scale. And just by default, at this point, I had moved far enough outside of the key just using this pattern that, um, it was pretty easy to just go ahead and run up this scale because it wasn't really tied to the key anymore. It had kind of wandered off in its own direction. Um... And then running up this scale, especially using this F sharp here, resolving this this leading tone of the key of G, resolving here, um, was a good way to uh, to kind of ground the key in G major. That shows you just kind of like how how it works to write a melody. I didn't expect this to turn into like a dual uh, melody here. We got the counter melodies and stuff going on, um, but I think it's a neat idea. I've never really tried to write something quite like that before, and it was it was fun. Um, so hey, that's how, that's how I write melodies. Um, do definitely try stuff out on your own. I, this obviously isn't great yet. There's a lot of tweaking that needs to be made. Um, and I'm not sure like where I would develop it or where I would go with it yet. Maybe I would look into, into working with other instruments like percussion or, um, getting some backing chords in there. But, uh, I think this is a pretty good start. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, congratulations, you are awesome. Uh, let me know if you made it all the way to the end of this video. I would be very glad if, um, if that were the case. Uh, if you want to ask me any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments or email me at ongakuconcept at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to uh, share your own compositions, feel free to like try start write, write a melody of your own. And uh, if you want to share it, there's a Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash Angaku Concept VGM. And we post our own transcriptions and uh, songs and other questions and other things there. And uh, it might be a good way to get, get some feedback from people who've been doing it longer and, uh, and bounce ideas off of each other. So uh, again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.